domain being what we can plug into the function and get a real number answer out, exponential functions, the x is in the exponent. Well, you can raise a number to any power. You can raise a number to positive powers. You can raise a number to negative powers. You can raise a number to fractional powers, and you're going to get an answer. So the domain of exponential functions is always all real numbers or in interval notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. You're always going to get an answer. Now the range, on the other hand, is, is not the same. Okay? The range <clears throat> is going to be restricted. Typically, it is um, y is greater than 0, or from 0 to positive infinity in interval notation. Um, but if, for example, like in number 31, you have a number added to the end of your function, we know that that's going to shift our function up. In the case of number 31, it's going to shift it up two units. So instead of our range being greater than 0, our range is now going to be greater than 2. So that's typically a range, but um, if there is a constant at the end of the function, it changes. So really your best bet here is to either think about all the different translations and whatnot um, or just straight up look at its graph. So let's look at number 31. We just discussed it. The domain is always going to be all real numbers. It does not matter what all is going on with our function. Uh, it's going to be all real numbers. And I do encourage you to use the interval notation as well. But we've got a couple of things going on on this one. Okay. Um, first of all, our base is one half. So that's going to change what our function looks like. This is actually a decay function. It's not going to be increasing. It's going to be decreasing. But that doesn't change our range. Our range is still the same, even if it's an exponential decay. Um, if we look at the exponent, that minus one is shifting it right one unit. Well, that doesn't affect our range. That's just moving it left and right. What does that negative 5 in front do, though? The negative 5 is going to take all of our values and multiply them by negative 5, correct? So instead of everything being positive, okay, 1 half to any power is going to be a positive number. Okay, however, if we take that answer and then multiply it by negative 5, all those are going to become negative values. So now our range is less than zero, but then we're shifted up two units. So I do believe I am going to check the graph, but I do believe that our range should be um, less than two. Y is less than two, or from an interval notation, we would write that from negative infinity to positive two. Now we've gone through a lot of those shifts and whatnot, but... Um, and that's what I just tried to talk you through, but you can always reference your calculator. Okay, I do encourage you to be able to do it without your calculator, but you always can reference this. You just have to make sure that you type it in correctly. Okay, so you've got negative five, you need to have the base of one half in parentheses, you need to have the x minus one in parentheses, and then the plus two, and then we can look at the graph, and we can see exactly what I just described. Okay? Um, it's uh, decay, but then it gets flipped over because of the negative 5, so it is actually increasing in the end. Um, and you can see that we kind of hit this horizontal asymptote at uh, 2. Our values are not going to go past 2. You can look at the table to confirm that. Um, Look at the table, you can see our y values are getting closer and closer and closer to 2. Now the calculator does at 18, it does call it 2, but it doesn't actually equal 
two. It's just um, it doesn't have enough decimal places there on the uh, on the table to express it. So I'll show you here. Um, if I plug in 18, then my exponent then would be 18 minus 1 would be 17, and then plus 2. It's not actually 2. It's just there's not room in the table for it to put that many decimals. So it starts rounding it, and it just considers it 2. This function is not actually going to equal 2. It's going to get infinitely close to it, but it won't actually equal 2. Okay? So that's the domain and range of exponential functions. Now, logarithmic functions, logarithmic functions being the inverse of exponentials. Remember, we introduced logarithmic functions um, as a way to help us solve um, exponential functions when we couldn't uh, change the base ourselves. Now, does anybody remember an issue that we had with logarithmic functions? What could we, was there anything that we could not plug into a logarithmic function? Yeah, we can't plug in a negative. Remember, your calculator gives you a, an error message uh, about the domain. So, our domain here is restricted. And it kind of makes sense. If logarithms are the inverses of exponentials, um, remember, inverses kind of switch the roles of the domain and range. So, if the range of an exponential function is restricted, then that means it's inverse the domain will be restricted. Uh, <clears throat> so the domain for logarithmic functions, you've got to take whatever is inside the logarithm and it has to be greater than uh, zero. Um, we also can't plug in zero because that would say that one half to, if we're looking at this example right here, one half to some power could equal zero. Well, it can't equal zero. You can't raise a number to a power and get zero unless that number is zero. Um, so this is kind of like our square root functions. Whatever is inside, um, you take what's inside the logarithm and set it greater than zero, not equal to. We could do equal to with our square root functions. We can't do equal to here. It has to be greater than zero. Our range, on the other hand, okay, being the inverse of an exponential function, the domain of an exponential is going to be the range of a logarithm. So the, range, or the domain of an exponential was all real numbers. So the range of a logarithm is all real numbers. And if you recall, when we had to graph some of these, um, remember our logarithmic functions look like this, so they decrease forever and they're going to increase forever. They're going to hit all the y values. It's just a matter of what x values can we use. Okay, so for number 38, we have log base 1 half of x plus 5. So log base 1 half of x plus 5, we take what is inside of the logarithm, and that has to be greater than 0 for our domain. So this is saying that x is greater than negative 5. And in interval notation, that would be from negative 5 to infinity. And our range is all real numbers. Let's graph that just to be sure. Now to graph this, you do have to use your change of base because your base is 1 half. So log of x plus 5 close the parentheses, divided by the log of 1 half. And let's graph it and look at it. Okay. Now, this looks a lot like a radical function because it looks like it appears out of nowhere. Let me remind you that this is just a shortcoming of the calculator. Your graph does not just appear out of nowhere here. It does actually continue Okay, it does actually continue. It gets really, really, really close to x equals negative 5 here. It just doesn't graph that detail. Um, but So you can see that it is going to decrease over here um, for forever. It just goes really slowly, but it is going to continue to negative infinity. And on this end of things, it is going to increase to positive infinity. It just does not express it that way. And you can see that negative 5 is our cut.
cutoff here. We have all the x values greater than negative 5. So that's how we do our logarithmic functions. Okay. So before we move on to the next characteristic, I would like for you to do 31 through 40.